Hello, welcome to another edition of Capra Comparison Picks. I'm Raj, and today I will be giving you some more prelim fights for UFC 273. Get out of here. Beat it. Volkanovski versus Chan Sung Jung, the Korean zombie. Um, be sure to check out the videos I did earlier this week where I go went through every other prelim fight on the card. And one of the main card fights that uh, Mark Madsen and Vince from Hell Pachel got moved up to the main card. But I already covered that on Monday. Be sure to check that video out. Um, this, I did the videos out of order, but I did cover all the prelim fights going up to these three. Headline of the prelim card is uh, Ian Gary and Darian Weeks. So, um... Moving on with the flow of events. Get out, get out of here. Stop that. <laughs> Go. <laughs> um, we're gonna continue this uh, prelim, the old, the old order. Anyway, moving up, we have uh, we have the heavyweight showdown between the boa constrictor Alexi Alonik, the oldest fighter in the UFC, taking on. Jared Vandera. Jared Vandera, the mountain. I don't know if he goes by that name anymore, but when he was a uh, champ in, um, was it EC, ECF or something? He was like a champion in some regional scene. He went by that nickname, the mountain. Tapology still has it listed as nickname, but I don't think that, that he's going by that uh, moniker anymore. But, the, um, we have this, of course, you know, Olenek was supposed to go against Ilir Latifi at first. Thankfully, that fell out because I said, if Olenek beats Ilir Latifi, I will get back into grappling and compete at the NAGA North, uh, or the North American Grappling Championships in Albany. Open, like, a, it's, what's it called? The Director's Class. That's the over 40. That's where I would be. But thankfully, that, didn't have, that fight never uh, went into fruition, so I didn't have to worry about having to sign up for BJJ and get back into that. Really, my lifestyle, being out of town for work and all that, I wouldn't have the time to invest into that type of deal that would kill every... All my free time is already soaking up by my family and then and trying to do YouTube content and just my, you know having a good old time <laughs> but anyway I, I don't know if i would be able to make time for that i don't have to worry about that now because now um bowl constrictors taking on jared vandera coming in uh pretty short notice uh, i think uh maybe a week or two so lexi alonic as i mentioned 44 years old the oldest fighter on contract with the ufc 44 years old, Vandera coming in as a prime 29. Very good. The um, lines opened up as Vandera was a slight favorite. He was like minus 125. Olenek was a minus 105, but money's been coming in. Oh, excuse me. Money's been coming in on Olenek. Now it's dropped even to even the line out. Coin flip odds, minus 110 either way, whoever you take. So, I'm going to start going through this with the former favorite, Mountain, Jared Vandera. <coughs> Vandera is going to be the bigger fighter coming in there with a 2 inch height advantage and I think roughly probably about a 10 pound weight advantage. He does tip the scales right over 260, like close to 265. I think last time he weighed in was like 262. Maybe 264 even, I don't know. Olenek is usually um, under 160, hovering around 250 something, 255, something like that. So Van Der should have the bigger body and much younger. You can't you can't forget about that. Much younger fighter here. Okay, Van Der is uh, training on Team Quest, old school um, facility in California. He also, uh, once in a while, um, goes. To, I guess he goes to Dan Henderson's fitness, um, athletic fitness facility because that's also listed on Tapology as another gym that he goes to. 
They're both in California. I don't see why I can't split the service and go to both. But um, Jared Bandera here, is, he's coming off a loss to Andre Arlovsky. Split decision. Not really, not, no shame in that. Andre Arlovsky's been, been chalking up decision wins over everybody in the, in the past recent history. Um, prior to that, he, he, got, he lost to Alexander Romanov. Alexander Romanov got a ground and pound round two. Alexander Romanov, still I do believe is, yeah, he's still undefeated. Can't take much away from that either. Um, before that, he beat Justin Taffa in a unanimous decision. Justin Taffa is like um, the Australian fighter. So, um, I mean, Justin Taffa coming off a of who did he knock out? Harry Hunsucker. So, I guess, I suppose that's a pretty good win for Jared Bandera. Before that, he lost to Sergey Spivak, common opponent. Alexei Olonik, his last loss was to Sergey Spivak. So, can't take much from that either. But Sergey Spivak was able to ground and pound Vandera round two, whereas Olonik went to a unanimous decision with him. And finally, before Sergey Spivak, he did have a win against Harry Hunsucker. I like Harry Hunsucker, but unfortunately, he just cannot win. People, you know, he's 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 the like the he's the guy to beat, I guess, if you want to come into the heavyweights. He's low, like a low-level gatekeeper. Like if you want to break in and uh, like get you know get another win on your record when you're coming into the scene, go against Harry Hunsucker. I'm not throwing shade on the dude. I really. He's got, he owns a couple gyms, he's a businessman. But uh, Vandera took care of business with him, ground and pound, round one. Okay, um, Vandera is a BJJ black belt. However, he has uh, got poor takedown defense. All his fights, he seems to be getting taken down. And now let's talk about his senior opponent. Alexi Alonik, the boa constrictor, coming in, a, like I mentioned, the loss to Sergey Spivak, unanimous decision. Prior to that, he lost to Chris Dawkins. Chris Dawkins, you know, he's, he had that loss. Chris Dawkins is a, was a contender. I don't know, he's dropped down now because he lost to Derek Lewis, got folded by him, then he lost to Curtis Blades. It, it, so, I mean, I'm sure he's fell off a little bit, but I would still rank him probably top 10-ish. Um, before that, Alonik lost to Derek Lewis, uh, right hook to ground and pound, round two. And prior to that, though, he did out fight, out strike Fabricio Verdum. He won a split decision. And he then, prior to that, he beat Maurice Green, the Crochet King, by armbar, armbar in round two. Lexi Alonik also has his own gym. Uh, Alonik MMA school. However, he also trains out of Rus Fighters MMA in over in Russia. What's interesting about his uh, 59 wins, <laughs> his 59 wins, he's got a 92% finish rate. Over 90, 59 wins. Over 90% of them he's finishing. He's got how many? 46 submission victories. 46 of those 59 wins are by submission. Then there's, uh, I don't know about the math, but uh, then he's got the striking wins. Anyways, 92% finish rate for Alonik. Uh, guys, the guy's a legend. This is, he's a legend, Dave. Alonik is a legend. Can't take that from him. So, um, all right. Let's see what the Cappers have to say in this very interesting fight. Taking alone it. We've got the MMA guru, the one from the UK that wears the beanie. And he got the beanie squad or whatever his followers are called. He's saying alone it by submission. I like MMA guru a lot. He's hilarious. He's very entertaining. Fun guy to watch. Then uh, jumping over here, we've got what's going on? Bleed MMA is taking the younger Vandera to get it done. He just thinks Alonix fell off. His last three fights, he's shown his age. 
But you got to remember, those are against his last three fights, his losses, last three losses, Derek Lewis, Chris Dawkins, and Sergey Spivak. Not bad losses to have. They're, all three of them, I think, could beat the shit out of Jared Bandera, the mountain. Just saying, I don't know, just saying. Hey, Nor, what you doing? I'm going to drop. Okay. So, um, you know, Bleed taking Vandera for that reason, and especially for the youth being 29. Okay. Then we've got Johnny K. I like Johnny K a lot. I, uh, I want to have him on my show sometime. Johnny K, I want you on my. I want you to come on a li- fi- Friday night live stream sometime. He's friends with uh, Cody from Blood Money. They do a live stream a lot, often together. Johnny K, a very good handicapper. All these links will be in the description. I urge you guys check these guys out. Subscribe to them. It'll be you know subscribe to me too. <laughs> I, I noticed since the since the break, I lost three subscribers. I've been putting out videos. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'm starting to lose a little bit of uh, motivation to, to do this work. Thankfully, I love this stuff. Sorry, Nora. I almost swore there. I love this stuff, so I'm going to keep doing it. But, uh, man, it's dis... It's... What's the word I'm thinking of? It's... Disambig... I, it's... Dis... Uh, it's right... <laughs> I can't think of the right word. It's right there. It took my tongue, too. But anyway, it's, it's deflating when I when I look at like I put out a video and I have no new subscribers, <laughs> new subscribers. Just but anyway, whatever. I'll get past it. I'm a grown man. This is not even. I don't get paid for this. This is my hobby, so I shouldn't complain. I I love doing it. Jumping over Vandera's side, we got both the fight night pick brothers, Craig. And Matt Allen, both taking the younger Vandera here, getting it done. They think he's going to impose a much stronger physical presence, better on the feet, has a black belt, so can hold his own on the ground. I don't know, though. Alonic on the ground can tap out anybody in any in a short amount of time. But um, the both brothers taking Vandera, mostly because of the youth and cardio advantage they think Alonic um, is going to gas out after round one if he does, and also if he does get to take down, Vandera does have a black belt, so he should be able to defend. I don't know. Interesting. We'll see. And finally, for the tiebreaker, we've got my friend Vlad, Nora's favorite handicapper, the Bulgarian cowboy Vlad from UFC Celebrities and Classics is taken. The bowl constrictor, the older fighter here. Celebrities and classics. Thanks for picking a side. He really didn't want to on this one, but he, so he's he's leaning. Olenek, he's not very confident with it, but that is his uh, pick when it comes down to it. So there you have it. I'm gonna go with, uh, I know I was taking Alir Latifi, but uh, I don't have the same confidence as I in Jared Bandera as I did in Alir Latifi. I don't know why. <sighs> Maybe because <laughs> I don't know. He's he's lost to quality fighters too. I should give him a chance, but I'm gonna go with the Alonic. I think he's he's a class. He's a master on the ground. He's a class above. And it's not like Vandera got a Gracie black belt. He got one, for, I'm, I'm not even sure where from. But uh, I think Alonic does have the better ground game. And it comes down to what's going to happen. It's going to go to the ground. Alonic is not going to keep his stand. Maybe he did outstrike, outstrike uh, Fabricio Verdum, who I think could beat Vandera. So I, I'm just saying, every his last five, with the exception of Maurice Green, I think Alexi Lonick's last five could all stomp on Bandera. I'm surprised Justin Toppa didn't beat him, to be honest with you. But uh, whatever. I'm taking Alexi Lonick by submission. <laughs> Moving on. Next we have 
Oh, see, the, the music changed right for the female fight. We have the female bantamweight fight between Aspen Ladd and Raquel Pennington. This is going to be a very interesting fight. Aspen Ladd coming in as the underdog here, plus 145, taking on the veteran like Raquel Pennington, been in there for with with the best of the best. And um, minus 170, Raquel Pennington. Minus 170, that's a little bit heavier of a favorite than I, I would think is deserving for her. But um, you need my help, Nor? You want me to help you? I can press pause. Here, I'll do it. I'll, don't touch it. I'll do it. As I was saying, Aspen Lad, underdog, at plus 145, comes in, <clears throat> taking on Raquel Pennington. The favorite at minus 170, 13 and 8. So let's start talking about Raquel Pennington because she is the favorite here. <clears throat> there wasn't really much of a line move, so money's been staying the same on both these as since they opened, I do believe. We've got um, Raquel Pennington coming off a great win against Macy Chazon, uh, where she guillotined her round two. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kazan was the much taller, much bigger girl, came in, but uh, Pennington showed she has a great fight IQ in there, managed to get the guillotine over Macy Chazon. <clears throat> Prior to that, she beat Penny Kianzai, unanimous unanim decision, and then she uh, took care of Marion Renault, the former, the old gym teacher, now retired fighter. Um, and that's her three fight win streak because prior to that she lost to Holly Holm, not a bad loss, unanimous decision. And before that she beat Irene Aldana by split decision. Raquel Pennington, the girlfriend partner of Tisha Torres, who was also on this card, fighting Mackenzie Dern later, later on this card, um, does have a slight one inch height and one and a half inch reach advantage. Not really much there though. An inch, what's an inch, nothing. Um, she fights at an altitude MMA in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So you gotta, you gotta imagine her cardio is in check, fighting at the high altitudes. That's why I call it altitude MMA. I'm sorry, I'm so close to the camera it feels like. Um, I have a whole new stand system. So it's kind of, that's why the camera moves a little bit. Good right there. That I, look at me. Look at I'm squatting, I'm doing a squat. I'm sitting on the invisible chair. <laughs> anyway, it's um, just cut off your hair. What? Your hair is just cut off. I know, I know. I can always just focus it back so I have more of the picture in it. But I don't want I don't want the camera to see into the kitchen, especially when you're in there doing work or whatever you're doing in there. <laughs> so, we got Rocky, Raquel Pennington, and uh, let's talk about Aspen Ladd, the opponent, the underdog here. Aspen Ladd, if you guys remember her last fight, she was getting screamed at by her coach slash boyfriend. No, thank you. Go. Screamed at in that loss to Norma DeMont. He was like, do something. I don't know. He was, I forgot, but I'm like, wow, that's a, that's a kind of a little bit of verbal abuse right there, but Whatever, I mean, it is what it is. I suppose if you're relying on your girlfriend's check to get paid, <laughs> you're gonna be screaming at her too. I don't know, I don't know. A lot of mixed mixed views on that whole situation. But Aspen Ladd took that unanimous decision loss to Norma Dumont. That was up at 145, I do believe. So Norma Dumont did uh, impose a little bit of big sister kind of control over her. She was the bigger girl in there and Use that to her advantage. And Aspen Lad, I think, might have been coming. You know why it was at 145? Because Aspen Lad's had problems making weight at 135. Her loss to, uh, well, prior to that fight, she did beat Yana Kuninskaya. Left cross the ground and pound round three. But prior to that, she lost to Jermaine Durandamy. Right cross, 16 seconds to round one. That was where she had a horrible weight cut. Horrible, like she almost fainted on the scales and she was like uh, totally out of it. She was sick, I think she was crying. Just just a bad wake up and uh, Jermaine Durandamine, J 
just took advantage of, of that and saw that. You don't need f smart fighter IQ to see that. Your opponent is absolutely drained from a horrible weight cut. You're just going to go in there and knock her out, and that's exactly what she did. But before that, when she came into the UFC, she has wins. She had a win over Sajara Eubank, Sarge, and uh, Tanya Evinger. Ground and pound round one. Aspen Ladd. Slightly younger, she's 27. Raquel Pennington is 33. Um, Aspen Ladd fighting at MMA Gold Fight Team, El Dorado Hills, California. Another female fighter that fights out of there is Andrea KGB Lee. According to Tapology, but last time I remember KGB, Andrea Lee was fighting out of Louisiana. Last thing, but I don't know, she is listed as one of the fighters in El Dorado Hills. I didn't, I don't follow. Lad or Pennington on Instagram, so I couldn't tell you pictures of who they're training with or whatnot. I I know I should have did my research. Time, brothers, I only got I got time to watch these cappers. Aside from that, I really don't have time to go into every fighter's Instagrams and watch their past fights and stuff. I have to go by prior knowledge and from the capper breakdowns. That's why it's a capper comparison pick show. You get what the whole thing. You get the you get the whole premise of this. So Aspen Lad mm, versus Raquel Pennington. Let's see what the let's see what the cappers have to say in this one. Starting with Raquel Pennington, the minus one seventy favorite. And it's weird because uh, this is the first fight. Aspen Lad is coming in as plus money. First fight as an underdog in the past. Definitely past all five of her last fights. She came in as a favorite. I'm not sure about the Jermaine Durandamy. I think, I, I heard that she did though. I heard she did from Fight Night Pick Brothers. But anyway, we're, we're gonna start with uh, Rocky Raquel Pennington. Taking her, we've got, what's going on, please? I know, I can't stop saying that because that's how he opens up every one of his shows. What's going on? Like it scares me. If I'm, if, because it'll, I mean, I haven't played in the car, I'll, I'll be just driving, then I, what's going on? I'm like, Jesus, jump, some, jump out of my seat a little bit. Okay, so, Bleed uh, is taking Rocky, Raquel Pennington. UFC celebrities and classics, Vlad taking Raquel Pennington. Johnny K picks. Johnny K taking Raquel Pennington. The MMA guru. With the Nick Cap taking Raquel Pennington, the Beanie Squad, uh, and finally Fight Night Pick Brothers, both in agreement. Uh, in the contrarian agreement, I love it. Fight Night Picks taking Aspen Lad. They watch the. They have a full breakdown where they both give plenty of reasons why she should. Be victorious here. I like it. The links will be in the description, guys. Take advantage of those. I put extra, I spent an extra 20 minutes on the computer after I upload this, just putting in those links and whatnot. So, um, Fight Night Picks are taking Aspen Lad. And you know what? I so want to, I so want to, but you know what? That last, that Norman Dumont fight is put and left a bad taste in my mouth. I picked Norman Dumont because I knew she was going to be the, bigger woman there and she was the plus money and I, I foresaw what was going to happen. You need me to sign that? Yeah. Give me a pencil or a yeah. pen or something. Right here. Here. Let me see it. Will that work? Yeah, would it work? Why wouldn't it? Pen. You had no homework. I can't believe it. There you go. We signed a blank page for you. Um, so here I'm going to have to side with... I'm going to side with the plus money. It's it's kind of a... I'm going to... You know what? Both these girls messed up in their last way. But didn't Pennington come come in like like off weight that last... Her last fight against Macy Chazon? 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 Whatever. I do believe she missed weight on that one. Aspen Ladd definitely has a history of weight because she she had to go 145 just so she could make the weight and I think she even came close to missing that weight against uh, her last fight in Norma Dumas. So both these women have struggles with making weight. I'm going to finalize my pick 
during the weigh-ins, but right now I'm gonna take the plus money on Aspen Lad. I am not at all confident with it at all. I, I really am still undecisive, but for the, for the purpose of the show, I will take a pick and I'll take the plus money on Aspen Lad. So, and I think uh, it'll probably go to decision. Hopefully Aspen Lad will use a little bit more. <sighs> Pennington is so smart though. And she's so well-rounded, she can wrestle. Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm gonna leave it like that, but I am not confident at all. That's my least confident pick. Don't fade, don't tail me or fade me on that fight because I'm gonna definitely talk about that more on Fridays uh, after the face-offs live, live stream with Dave on Friday. So, but for right now, I'm gonna go with plus my ex, Aspen Lad. Because that little tidbit of information where every single fight prior to this one came in as a favorite at the minus money. So, I don't know. I just think there's a little bit of recency bias controlling that number. Um, moving on. Next we have the headliner of the prelims. The sensation, hot, new sensation out of Ireland. Ian Gary making his second UFC fight against uh, Darian Weeks. Also making his second fight in the UFC. Short, coming in short notice, Darian Weeks in. Very short notice. This at, or not very short notice, but he is coming in short notice. I forgot who uh, Gary was supposed to fight in the first place. I can find out for you very quickly though, as I have a printout here and Originally, Gary, Ian Gary was supposed to fight. Okay, I could be wrong. I, I could have swore that uh, Derry Weeks is coming to short notice, but I guess not. I guess not. We got some. My bad. My bad. We got Ian Gary undefeated. A huge favorite, though. Almost four to one favorite. He's minus. 365, little crazy there, guys. I think I think you could admit, um, little crazy. Darian Weeks, five and only one loss, coming in at plus 290. His one loss was to Bam Bam Barbarina in his UFC debut. That, I'm sure, he took on short notice. He came in Tuesday of fight week to fill in the spot and take on Bam Bam Barbarina. And he went to a unanimous decision with him where he uh, arguably won one of those rounds in his short notice UFC debut. Very good look for, and Bam Bam, Bam Barbarina just beat Immortal Matt Brown last week, or the week before, you know what I'm saying, the last event in Columbus, because I had money on Matt Brown, because he was the home favorite, you know, or he was, he was the hometown, the crowd was behind, you know, anyway, whatever. Darian Weeks coming off that loss to Bam Bam Barbarina. Before that, he was in LFA where he took care of uh, Craig Fairley by punches round one. And before that, he was in Midwest Fight League, smaller promotion, where he took on Dustin Parrish, took him out, punches round two. Darian Weeks does have some finish capability there. He's uh, actually, he went 15 and four as an amateur. So that's not a bad look there for him. He trains out of uh, Columbus, Missouri, the Hewlett House. Uh, not many, not a very popular place. I don't know any other fighters coming out of the Hewlett House. Ian Gary, on the other hand, is training out of Sanford MMA, out of Florida, with all you know, Henry Hooft, uh, Gilbert Burns, Vincente Luque. Uh, they house a bunch of killers down in Sanford's training facility, Sanford MMA, one of the top gyms throughout the world. So uh, the future, Aaron, Ian Gary, he had his UFC debut and he won, he beat the diabetic Jordan Williams. Jordan Williams did have a little bit of a, uh, he was kind of winning until he got caught. He, I guess you could say like in the judge's eyes, uh, Point-wise, Jordan Williams was up on the card 
But then he a uh, counter right strike in round one took him out. Ian Gary took out Jordan the diabetic Williams. Prior to that, he um, Ian Gary was uh, he won a championship fight. He he was a welterweight champion over in uh, Cage Warriors where he beat Jack Grant. Jack Grant known throughout the Cage Warriors scene as uh, one of the top fighters at the in the welter, welterweight division. Prior to that, he beat uh, Rastam Akhman. Akhman uh, has UFC experience, has been in the UFC. He beat him by head kick in round two, Ian Gary did. Prior to that, he beat Lawrence Tracy, ground and pound round one. So Ian Gary finishing power as well. He can get it done. Ian Gary's, uh, he's one of my picks for the un unranked contender um, contest. Ian Gary, is, he was one of my later round picks, but he nonetheless, he is one of my picks and I still have him. And I, I like him in this spot. I, I don't like that. Minus 365 though. I will throw him in a parlay, but there's no there's no value. You know, see what I'm saying? He uh, did um, does have a four inch height advantage and a two inch reach advantage. These guys are both in their 20s weeks is 28 and Gary is 24 so both under 30 um, but Gary does have the definite height and reach advantage he would be a bigger guy a little side note he recently got married to Layla Anna Lee I think that is uh, some sort of a celebrity I, I didn't really search it but I did hear that from Fight Night Pick Brothers that he just recently got married, and then he, uh, Craig said it was to uh, Layla Anna Lee. I meant to re Google search her, find out who she was, but I just didn't get to it. I'm sorry, it's because I want to get this video out. So, let's see what the cappers have to say in this heavily one sided, one favorite, one, you know, heavily one sided fight here. Mine is 365 wide line. That's like like tomorrow. There's four fights left after after this that I didn't cover yet. And three of the four are heavily one-sided. I don't even know if I want to do that many Capper consensus dances, so I'm not even sure if I'm gonna. I do want to cover Mackenzie Dern Tisha Torres though, because that's a very even fight that could go either way. I have arguments for both girls. But the rest of the card. Kamza, everybody's on board with him. Um, Piotr Jan, come on, everybody's on board with him. Except for Dev the Dude, I think he's taking Aljamain Sterling. You're the underdog, he's claiming. But anyway, and then um, of course everybody is taking Alexander Volkanovsky. I'm putting a hedge bet on Chan Sung Jung at plus 500, but uh, anyway, maybe I will get into it a little bit tomorrow, but for Tonight, let's continue with this. Take it, Ian Gary. Let me find my good marker. We've got um, the guru, Winston. Come on, move. With the Beanie Squad out of the UK, taking Ian Gary. Of course, he's very familiar with Ian Gary because of the Cage Warriors thing. Johnny K. Also taking Gary How decision. Okay, okay, Johnny K. I wonder if that comes to plus money. I don't think it does. Maybe, maybe though. What's the over under? Over one and a half rounds. Set at one and a half. Over is minus 170, under is at plus 140. So I don't know, decision might yield a close to plus number for you and Gary. I don't know, i have to check that out. But uh, then we got Vlad from UFC Celebrities and classics Vlad taken Ian Gary uh, fight night picks both Matt and Craig both saying a decision however don't count out Darian Weeks he is definitely he would they would neither one of them would be surprised at all if uh, Darian Weeks had the big upset here he does have the capabilities he has um, finish, finish some people, and he did make a very good showing against Bam Bam Brian Barberina on short notice, winning even one of those rounds, surprising everybody going to a unanimous decision on his UFC debut. So 
So I can't take that from him. And finally, bleed. He said one of these times he will. He thinks uh, Ian Gary is a little bit overrated hype. And he's looking for a spot to fade on him. Fade Ian Gary, but this is not the spot. He says, uh, yeah, Ian Gary, reluctantly, he's deep down. He's staying away from this in a, in a betting standpoint, but deep down, he's rooting for weeks, but he thinks his pick, his smart pick, Ian Gary, should win the fight. So there you have it. This is another full capper consensus. Oh, how's your bath? Good. You look fresh and clean. You probably smell a lot better, too. <laughs> So, full cap or consensus is what, Nora? Come on. Where are the Come campers? here. Come on. Come on. Where are the handicappers? Speak cor correct and clearly. Where are the handicappers? Pick one side of the right And in this case, everybody is taking Ian Gary, the huge favorite, to beat Darian Weeks, as well as I am. I as as am I as am I. I think Gary should get this win. I kind of want to throw a scratch off ticket hedge bet on weeks because of the plus money plus two ninety. I mean it's worth you know it's worth maybe a quarter of a unit, half a unit, just just cause just to hedge it out. But Ian Gary will be the parlay pillar in this three leg parlay. I'm still undecided here. But to, I, to recap, time to recap, I've got um, uh, the old man, Alexi Olenek, defeating Jared Vandera by submission, I think when it goes to the ground, which I'm pretty sure it will. Uh, Olenek will throw in a, one of his uh, signature chokes, maybe an anaconda or a Dars or who knows? He can he can come up with what's that? What's the one uh, neck crank? He can he can pull. He's got a whole floor a, a whole repertoire of ground chokes and submissions that he can get on Vandera. Vandera supposedly is a black belt too, but uh, I don't know where he got his black belt, and I haven't really seen him use it. So I'm going with Olenek to get a submission win there. And then I've got uh, Aspen Ladd plus money for the upset. Hopefully his, uh, her boyfriend slash coach won't be yelling at her the entire fight. Hopefully she'll have a good weight cut, not not you know not struggling, not looking like a, a shell of herself up there on weigh-in day and uh, Hopefully she'll get back on her horse and gather that hype again after a victory over Raquel Pennington. But Pennington, ugh, I, I, very, I don't like that fight. I do like the fight, like, as a fan, it's going to be a very entertaining and fun fight, I do believe. I, I'm going to, aside from this video, I'll probably end up staying away from it, which you guys know I'm a degenerate gambler. I bet all of the fights. So I will throw Lad in right here for this parlay piece. Lad, Lad, not Vlad. Her name is Aspen Lad. Vlad. L Vlad is a handicapper. Yes, I know. I know it's your favorite. But I'm going to take Aspen Lad for the upset here against Raquel Pennington. I don't know why. Maybe I'll flip my pick. We'll see. But right now I'm taking that plus my. As a, my only underdog on the on these on this three leg parlay, and finally take it in Gary to get it done over weeks. However, I will put like a half a unit or a quarter unit on weeks just cause he's plus two ninety. Anything over anything over like that high is worth you know ten dollars make you almost thirty. Ten dollars make you twenty nine plus your ten back. So there that is. So there you go. Gather the info, place your bets, and cash those tickets. <laughs> tickets. I appreciate you guys watching. Give me that thumbs up. Go ahead and fill the comments with who you think is going to win these fights. Tell me your three-leg parlay out of these three fights. 
Go ahead. Th tell me if I'm crazy with this one, which <laughs> the, the cappers seem to think I am. But anyway, if you're on the side of Lad as with me to help me help support my decision, because we're we're far and few between this. There's not many of us support an Aspen Lad here. Um, but there you have it. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your, and for Christ's sakes, you haven't subscribed, please do that. Please do it. Subscribe. Subscribe. Thank you, Nor. Thanks for watching. Good luck on your bets. And I will probably, I'll probably do a main card. I, I want to cover Mackenzie Dern, Tisha Torres anyways. So I will call, I'll do another show tomorrow. Tune in for that. Thanks for watching. See you then. Bye.